Hey guys, so about a week ago I put up a community post saying that I was finally returning to working on Crosscraft. It's been a long time, and honestly, the reason I disappeared is pretty simple. My old job just really took up a lot of my time and energy, but now I've got a new work from home position, a lot more flexibility, and that means I can finally dive back into this project again. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what I've been doing on my first sprint back, which started from September 1st to September 14th. So one issue that I have, right, is I'm trying to pick up an old code base, and it's actually whether or not I should do that or I should write a new one. And I mean, the decision was pretty obvious to write a new one. But the reason I didn't want to pick up the old code base isn't that the code doesn't work, it's that I've made bad decisions in the past. For example, single player is running this client plus server, like independent code base, and then there's a client code base for doing multiplayer and a server thing for doing multiplayer too, whereas it should just be one client, one server, and then wrap them uh, into each other uh, for single player. Uh, other ideas that were bad or things that I didn't do, for example, was making like a graphics API or some sort of abstraction there. Um, there's a lot of stuff where it's just the client is just doing some raw code that's like, hey, here's OpenGL code that shouldn't be here. It should be wrapped correctly. Um, and then another one was doing index rendering. That's just something that like I didn't really know at the time. Uh, but on the PSP specifically, index rendering is like 20 to 30 percent slower. And index rendering is just a way of saving memory. Usually, it's the correct decision to make on like PC and whatnot. But on PSP, that's not correct. Um, another thing is that I don't want to use C++. It's just really awful to work with. And I would much rather write with Zig, even if that means that there's going to be more integration pain with trying to compile that on PSP. So the thing that I wanted to get done with Sprint 1 was pretty much the base engine. Uh, this would include stuff like rendering, maybe some basic audio, input, utilities, uh, project structure, things like that. Now, I wanted to make sure that I was going to do this absolutely correctly. So I didn't want to move on past the basics of the Sprint until I had had everything that I wanted. And this turned out to be a pretty good choice. Um, one thing that I did, for example, was I laid out all of the APIs as V tables uh, so that they can be swapped out implementation per implementation for every single um, thing that you would do. So for example, audio, graphics, input, they could be swapped out with different and equivalent subsystems uh, on any console, and they still maintain the same correct semantics. So doing that, um, one thing that I found was like, okay, I created an OpenGL renderer in the first like seven or eight days, and I decided I wanted to add Vulkan support. Um, and that was actually a relatively difficult decision because I was like, oh man, I only have a couple days. Should I really do this? But it ended up being very valuable because I found that I needed to add more uh, things to the graphics API. And those changes, they weren't just for Vulkan. They were to make the entire like, system easier to use and by doing that uh, I ended up getting probably a better result for both. Now the performance uh, initially starting out here this is on Linux because Windows performance is just basically entirely gate capped by the fact that Windows takes forever to update the screen so right so both of these are still actually limited by the fact that uh, the screen uh, takes longer to update so x11 slash Wayland both are supported by the way um, th those are actually the limiting factor to whether or not I, uh, my implementation can run faster or not. So I've not encountered any graphical lag at this point, and I shouldn't. I'm on an RTX 5080, right? <laughs> but just even seeing such high numbers, like 40,000 FPS, uh, just tells me that I'm roughly in the best performance range that I can be in. I also put a lot of care on the input system. The input system supports controllers, and it supports a uh, mouse keyboard, and all the stuff like that. And it's done in such a way that you basically create what is considered an action and then you bind it to um, different keys or different things like that. There's different types of actions based on whether or not you need a single axis of control, uh, multiple axes of control, like uh, for example, a thumbstick, uh, or just you need to know whether or not a button is up or down. We also added macOS support, which uh, is done through Molten VK, and there were some issues with trying to create that, but overall I was able to get that done pretty quickly, um, within about like three hours on a particularly sleepless night, so. Right now I'm pretty happy with the baseline engine, 
The next thing I want to do is really uh, start working on the server client protocol stuff, and then probably like tooling and setting up for like PSP. So I didn't really just start with PSP because I knew there was going to be difficulty with it, but I also still emphasize and understand that I need to get this support rolled out pretty quickly uh, in order to do real testing on it. So that's what's coming for Sprint 2, and then Sprint 3 is really going to be getting everything on the PSP and really starting that client work. Uh, because right now we're, we're just not really doing that. Uh, what we're going to be working on is just simply the client server model itself and all of the data and whatnot of how does that like talk together and how does that work. If you made it to the end, thank you very much. There's a Discord server linked below and please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.